Hello and welcome back to 365 Days with MXM Tune. I'm Maya, a singer, songwriter, video maker, and of course, an Oakland native. I'm also a big fan of history. I love untold stories, gross facts, hidden secrets, anything weird, dark, and funky from the past. Each day, I'm going to share a few of my favorite deep cuts with you. So let's take a look at today's stories with a quick mention that today's is about a pretty sad historical event. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365. Today, in 1941, Japanese aircrafts attacked Pearl Harbor, a naval base near Honolulu, Hawaii in a raid that killed 3,000 Americans. This marked the entrance of the U.S. into World War II. On the morning of December 7th, a Sunday, just before 8 a.m., hundreds of Japanese fighter planes attacked the naval base. They damaged and in some cases destroyed eight battleships, 20 vessels, and more than 300 airplanes. Pearl Harbor is in a main part of Hawaii that's basically the middle of the Pacific Ocean. It's 2,000 miles from the U.S. mainland and 4,000 miles from Japan. This remote location convinced the U.S. military that Hawaii was not a likely spot for an attack from Japan. The Japanese military had easier access to a number of nearby colonies like the Dutch East Indies, Singapore, or Indochina. Basically, this meant that the military areas at Pearl Harbor were dangerously undefended at the time of the attack. The airfields were overcrowded, and the ships were spaced close together, making everything very susceptible to attack. The attack itself was a surprise— but tensions between the United States and Japan had been running high for a long time. Japan was antagonistic towards China, at the time a strong ally of the United States. They wanted to expand into Chinese territory and cut into the Chinese import market as well. Japan eventually decided to declare war on China, and in an effort to quell the violence that ensued, the U.S. tried to use sanctions and trade embargoes against Japan. They thought that if they cut off Japan's access to goods and services, they could stop them from their aggressive expansion efforts. Instead, the sanctions angered the Japanese and they got even more aggressive in their approaches. The stalemate pointed the two countries towards war. In their attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese goal was to destroy the Pacific fleet so that the Americans would have a hard time fighting a Japanese army spread across the South Pacific. They attacked around 8 a.m. on December 7th, Japanese planes crowded the sky over Pearl Harbor and began launching bombs and gunfire down on the American ships docked at the harbor. Then, at 10 minutes after 8, they dropped a 1,800-pound bomb on the battleship USS Arizona. The bomb caused the ship to explode and sink with 1,000 men aboard who perished immediately. The attack wasn't over with the bombing of the USS Arizona. Next, torpedoes hit the USS Oklahoma and began to shake back and forth and eventually fell sideways underwater. By the end of the two-hour-long attack, every battleship had either completely sunk or been seriously damaged. The USS Oklahoma, California, West Virginia, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, and Nevada ships were eventually repaired. Even though the damage both to soldiers, vessels, and fleets was enormous, the Japanese army didn't succeed in their goal of completely destroying the Pacific Fleet— Battleships were already becoming less important vehicles of war, so the damage done to the battleships didn't actually hurt the military as much as the Japanese army imagined that it would. Aircraft carriers had become far more important, and by the sheer luck of coincidence, all the aircraft carriers stationed at Pearl Harbor were away from base on that day. They were either on the mainland or delivering troops on nearby islands. In addition, while the attack severely damaged parts of the army equipment that were used at sea, it didn't do much damage to the parts of the equipment that were stored on land. The oil storage facilities, repair stations, and the docks themselves remained completely intact. Therefore, the U.S. Army could rebound from the attack, stultifying the goals of the Japanese Army. After the attacks, President Franklin D. Roosevelt addressed Congress. He said that America would defend itself to any degree possible and never endure a similar attack again, and proposed to enter war with Japan. Congress approved Roosevelt's declaration of war. This caused Japanese allies Germany and Italy to also declare war against the United States, and Congress declared that the United States was officially in a war against three nations. After staying out of the fray for the first two years of the conflict, the United States was now enmeshed in World War II. 
and a complicated conflict it was. The war began in 1939 when Germany invaded Poland, and then the French and the English declared war on Germany. Around the world, totalitarian regimes were gaining power and people were losing trust in democracies after the global economy took a downturn. Though Democratic President Roosevelt was opposed to the aggression being put forth by Japan, Italy, and Germany, he avoided war for as long as possible. Roosevelt had condemned Nazi Germany publicly and was increasingly worried about Hitler's gains in battle in Europe. Though President Roosevelt condemned Nazi Germany, some people harshly criticized him for not entering the war earlier to stop the Holocaust. Some historians have accused him of being indifferent to the Holocaust in part because of the late entry into war. Though what constituted the exact start of the Holocaust is debated by scholars, because the ways that Hitler enacted genocide on Jewish and other populations evolved through the course of his rule, beginning with persecution aimed at emigration and culminating in the use of concentration camps. It's estimated that there was anywhere between three and seven years that Roosevelt knew that Hitler was participating in genocide and did not intervene. All told, six million Jewish people perished in the Holocaust, and the additional victims, including Roma people, gay people, and disabled people, brought the total death count to an abominable 11 million. The United States tried to avoid the war for as long as possible because after World War I, they wanted to stay out of European conflicts and adopted a policy of isolationism. Pearl Harbor ended that, and the U.S. became as involved in the Second World War as they had ever been in the first one. Today, in 1979, the first rap song came out on a major label. It was pretty different than the rap songs of Eminem and Jay-Z that we know of today. The artist was named Curtis Blow, and his song was called Christmas Rappin'. As you might have guessed, it was a rap about Christmas. <laughs> Taking lyrics from traditional Christmas carols and updating them with a rap mentality, it sold 400,000 copies and set the stage for Blow's next single, The Breaks, which became the first rap record to earn a gold RIAA rating. Fun fact, Curtis Blow later became an ordained minister. In 1979. I don't have enough memories from the month of December. I think I have a photo of myself here. I believe it's a selfie, a mirror selfie I took while I was in Manchester in the UK. Uh, We were playing a show. I was feeling sad but artsy, so I took a selfie (laughs) with a mirror. And I don't, I don't know. That's all my, that's my memory. I remember having a good time though, playing the Manchester show and um, being really excited because I knew like a couple people from. Twitter that we're going to that one. And so I wanted to play a good set. And yeah, I just have fond memories. It was like raining really hard and I got to go get five guys. And I remember the guy who was at the counter asked me if I was American. And I said, yes. And he goes, oh, where are you from? And I was like, California. And he goes, this one's on me. So he gave me a free milkshake and that was really exciting. (laughs) So (laughs) that's my memory from December 7th, 2019. Thanks so much for listening, and I'll see you tomorrow. If you please subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts and follow along at 365 Days MXM Tune on your preferred social media platforms. It's 365 with MXM Tune. New facts every day, so don't leave too soon. I'm gonna teach you stuff, no, it won't be tough. Gonna go a year till you've had enough. It's 365.